the notion that during the actual striking of the ball, the player's body must be moving forward, that the weight of the body must be transferred from the back foot to the front, and should be directed into the intended target, would be familiar to anyone who plays tennis. How and when this concept came about is anybody's guess. But one way or another, the idea of the forward movement has been universally accepted as an essential part of all ball striking techniques. And as such, it is being tirelessly promoted by the tennis coaches of all ranks and on all levels of the game. This indoctrination campaign has been extremely successful. Unfortunately, not at elevating the ball striking skills of the public, but mainly at creating a major mental block in the minds of millions. So, presently, any suggestion that the body could be moving in one direction while reliably sending the ball in a completely different direction would instantly be met with disbelief and rejected as a preposterous idea by practically everyone. But reality is always stranger than fiction. Especially if this fiction relies not on facts and knowledge, but only on a highly convoluted and flimsy reasoning. Smoke and mirrors, in other words. In the real world, if we are talking strictly about mechanical devices, the propulsion of projectiles has always been attained by way of rotation or spinning, never by way of linear movement. The main reason for using rotation is that the task of propelling projectiles ultimately boils down to one thing only, that is, to generating the highest possible velocity. And mechanically, this highest possible velocity could be attained only by way of rotation not by way of pushing something in a straight line. Here are the examples of such propulsion devices and their methods. Such is the simple fact of life, from which no tennis player will be exempt, no matter what they are being told. So, if human body were to be used for the purpose of striking or throwing, it should better be ready to do some spinning. And spin, they do.
by and large, people have rather sketchy understanding of general mechanics or how things around them work. This environment creates the perfect conditions for dissemination of all sorts of falsehoods. Ironically, and quite often, by those who know and understand the least. The belief in direct correlation between the forward movement of the striking body and the resulting travel of the projectile that one will mimic the other is a good example of such falsehoods, which, if taken to heart, inhibits the player's ability to strike the ball well and relegates most of them to a life of eternal frustration and bewilderment. Physics is simply not on their side.